Hi, I'm Martha Beck. And I'm Rowan Mangan, and this is another episode of Bewildered, the podcast for people trying to figure it out, isn't it, Marty? Isn't it? It that? is, barely so. So today we're doing something a little bit different, not to the podcast, but just with each other and the process of recording, which has <laughs> got to be fascinating for the peeps. So we're not in the same geographical location today, Marty, are we? Ooh, no, we are not, which is spooky and 21st century. But as long as we're in the same emotional space, it doesn't matter if we're in the same geographic space, does it? Well, let's see if, if we are in the same emotional space. We can only hope. My emotional space is large. <laughs> <laughs> mine is small and crooked. So I think mine fits into yours. Well, okay, let's just move on to what you're trying to figure out. What are you trying to figure out, Ro, besides all the logistics of this podcast? Look, Marty, as so often with me, I'm just trying to figure out how to be a good partner to you in this world. Oh, what else matters? I mean, partner is maybe the wrong word because what I'm trying to figure out at the moment is often to do with how to be a good sidekick to you, not oh, specifically no. partner. I thought you were yeah, going like, to keep me as a pet. <laughs> more our relationship from my perspective. No, it's more like uh, the other way around, but I, I have a lot of responsibilities for a pet. <laughs> You're um, a working pet. I'm a working pet. I'm like a dogs with jobs. <laughs> Um, so this is what happened. I'll just tell you, I might as well just tell you. So I've been putting a little bit of pressure on you lately to get better clothes because, you know, your, your standard attire for a public speaking event will be mm -hmm. like a blue turtleneck from Target that was on the specials rack that doesn't fit you very well. And mm -hmm. at some point, our dog Claire has like chewed out the back of it. I think it used to be the front, but then you thought, oh, I can still use this if I just put the bit that the dog gnawed out at the <laughs> back. And then you get a safety pin and you pin up the turtleneck because it's too big. And then there's an oil stain from something, some paint or something years uh, ago. I can mix the color of the shirt and paint over the paint stains. <laughs> this is what I have discovered. <laughs> I know she actually does that. <laughs> so I was like, look, enough. You are a public figure. You're going out in the world. Let's dress like it. God damn it. And so Ooh. anyway, to, to that end, Marty got a new blouse. I did. <laughs> Lovely thing. Lovely thing. Not really a blouse. That would be too um, conventional. It was a little bit edgy. It was a bit fashion forward, was it, Marty? Yes, it was a garment. It was a garment of some sort. So some sort. we go off to the event. She's wearing her new garment lovely looking great we start doing small talk with the people who are running the event this happens this is what happens i've learned this you, you come in you do small talk and i'm feeling a lot of pressure because i'm your sidekick and i'm also kind of your pet owner keeper <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like i have to contain the human in the right way so that the genius may step forth so Ooh. that's why I was so horrified, Marty, as you were being delightful to these people when I realised that your beautiful new garment hmm. had been put on backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, she's about to go on stage in front of all these people and she's got her top on backwards, which is honestly worse than the, the target turtleneck this amazing <laughs> beautiful fashion forward garment and it's just on backwards i could see the zip right i could see the zip zipped up in front yeah if it was upside down that would be a serious problem backward forward what, what's the difference it wasn't inside out either that was apparent but yeah. it was a big enough problem for me to panic as your keeper so i was like <laughs> very rudely burst into the small talk and said marty you must need to pee <laughs> I guess you just picked it up in the way I was moving my eyes. <laughs> and uh, she she jumped right on that. She's never shy about being taken away from small talk. So shy we went on to the... I wish I could be. It's very <laughs> hard for you as a pet owner when I'm not shy about peeing. <laughs> That's true. 
<laughs> so look, I took you off to the bathroom. I was doing my job. But you were also about to do some bit of public speaking, right? Yeah. So I didn't want to upset you. I just wanted to, like, deal with the problem. So mm. I was standing there in the bathroom. There's two stalls with the door closed. So that means there's two humans in there and there's a pretty good chance that they are there to see you because we're just right mm. next to the, mm-hmm. the venue. Mm. So I'm like, how do I do this in a way that does not bring shame upon our house? And and doesn't freak you out or make you feel self conscious. Hey, babe, I don't judge you. It's fine. It's totally <laughs> fine. Do. Oh my god, I judge you so hard. Um, but I I just I didn't want to convey that at the time because it felt like an important moment. So I was like, sweetie, look, uh, you know, I think you know you're great with clothes, <laughs> and you make interesting choices all the time, and it's really good. And I hear the toilet flush, and I'm like, what does that mean? And I was like, but look, I just, I have to tell you this and I don't want it to be awkward, but dude, it's on backwards. It's on backwards. You've got the zip here and maybe you couldn't do the zip at the back. Maybe you know it's on backwards and you just didn't, didn't couldn't reach it. Maybe you don't yet have the concept of back and front. <laughs> yes, you can get in front of a stage and delight them with the most ex- amazing self-help and funny and everything, but no, you can't dress yourself. Honey, let me dress Never you. <laughs> let, you yes. let me dress you with my but, eyes. But, but. What happened next, oh, Rowie? So I very gently told her this and I leaned forward and began unzipping the little zipper. And at that point, Marty reached the back and brandished the tag (laughs) that was actually at the back. It was Ah. so fashion forward. It had the subtle little zip that goes at the back, at the front. that's right. That's oh. how fashion forward it is. Fashion, I suppose, is in the back. And it's if it's fashion forward, it puts everything in the front. Yeah. It wasn't my greatest I moment won. as sidekick. Yeah. I won the fashion contest that very day. It, you did. I, I, and it was the only day of my life I have ever won a fashion contest. Basically, the one thing I had going for me was that I knew how to put clothes on. She can do everything else. And that day is when it finally came to me that, no, she can actually put clothes on too. So I'm completely, I'm completely redundant. Redundant. Well, you're not though, because I'm trying to figure out something related to those very same clothing advances. Tell me about it. Because you also ordered me some pants and (laughs) they came and they were shaped for a completely different human. And um, Like an octopus? More like an octopus, yeah. More like an octopus with hooves and a little chubbiness. No, the, the octopus would actually be very slim in the middle. Octo- an octopus a foot long can fit through a hole the size of a dime. That is literally true. And therefore, an octopus would have fit in these pants. I'm not sure what else would, frankly. I don't. I am trying to figure out how to return things mm. by mail. By snail mail. They came in a box designed to be tried on, not the box, the pants. And then <laughs> maybe that was a mistake. There you go. I can fit in the box. <laughs> then if they don't fit, you put them back in the box. There is a self addressed stamped label. You put them in it. I assume you take them somewhere. This has been sitting, the box and the pants have been sitting in my room for like five days and they just strike such fear into my heart. I, the thought of, returning them by mail just is so complex to me. I'm very excited about things like how to overcome anxiety and transform human consciousness and save the ecosphere, but return a pair of pants in my dreams. I'm actually thinking of maybe having some bones replaced or rearranged so that I fit the pants so I won't have to send them back. Mm. Yeah, we could do that. We could do that. It's... (laughs) It's funny, like I'm trying to rank, you know, the difficulty of getting dressed with things the right way around and and stuff like that versus because you can get dressed. We've established this. Mainly, yeah, yeah, if I focus. So I don't know. I I believe that if you can get dressed, you can return a pair of pants. Mm, It's an interesting hypothesis, Mangan. We We shall test it. All right, let's test it. 
We'll be right back with more Bewildered. I have a favour to ask. You might not know this, but ratings and reviews are like gold in the podcasting universe. They get podcasts in front of more faces, more eyes, more ears, all the bits that you could have a podcast in front of. That's what they do. So it would help us enormously if you would consider going over to your favorite podcasting app, especially if it's Apple, and giving us a few stars, maybe even five, maybe even six. If you can find a way to hack the system, I wouldn't complain. And uh, a review would also be wonderful. We read them all and love them. So thank you very much in advance. Let's just go out there and bewilder the world. Let's get to today's topic. What do you think? Oh, a topic. Why not? Let's do it. So this topic came from a conversation that we had not too long ago that was related to the idea of drifting. Mm. I think I was driving and we were talking on the phone and I was like changing lanes or something and there was just like that sense of, oh, the car wants to stay in the lane. And mm. um, I started thinking and talking to Marty about how so many of us just um, drift through our lives from like sort of milestones that the culture approves of from one mm. to the other. So whether it's drift from school to college, if that's the rules of your particular culture or to work mm-hmm. and then, and, and the, as long as we take, continue to take the obvious direction, then we don't have to think too much and it's relaxing. Right. <laughs> right. And that is actually one of the functions of cultural patterns. They, They save us from having to make choices. We can be quite passive because the whole culture is telling us now you do this and now you do this and now you do this. So it's convenient and it saves a lot of anguish, I'm sure. But as you pointed out, like people can drift into places that aren't perfect for them. Yeah, exactly. It's like you can get caught in a current and then suddenly 50 years goes by and you're like, oh, wait, I don't think I wanted to be on that track after all. And so Oops. we just we just started thinking about, you know, culture wants us to drift in a certain direction. And Marty started talking about what she was calling like the drift patterns, which yeah. is, you know, where the culture wants us in particular to drift. And so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, because I've, I've been reading a lot about um, 19th century, maybe even 18th century naval warfare. And of course you have. Of course I have. So it's really fascinating how these people who couldn't really go far or communicate very freely on land compared to us, they could get into the ocean. And if they knew the drift patterns, they could just get into the one they wanted and basically be carried by currents as well as wind anywhere in the world. And it's... Uh, that, that is so efficient and almost magical. And I thought, you know, culture is doing us a favor or thinks it is by trying to carry us through our lives that way. But as you say, 50 years in, if we're in the wrong drift pattern, it's brutal to realize you wasted all that time. And why did you do that? The culture basically wanted you to drift in the way that it, that you, it sent you. Because what when individuals conform to its drift pattern, it gets to maintain what it is and be in control. So it's basically benevolent, but then it can become extremely powerful. And if a a ship is in the wrong current, really bad things can happen. Yeah. 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 I mean, (laughs) there's, I don't know if we're we're probably belaboring this metaphor too hard, but that's right. There's plenty more metaphors to come in the show. So you're in a you're in a current. You're drifting into college from school, and that seems, like you say, pretty benevolent, pretty benign. And then, I think what what can happen is that there's like gentle currents, and then there's not so gentle currents. And then suddenly mm-hmm. you don't. It's about do you know you're in a current or not? So in Australia, we have uh, we're all very very aware of of what's called like rip tides, rip currents, which um, I mean, probably everywhere, but um, there's like, it it feels very, like a very big deal in Australia in your childhood. It's like (gasps) the rip, get caught in the rip. Uh, And that's a a current that flows outwards from the beach. It's a strong one. And and like very quickly, if you get caught in a rip, you can just be like out to sea. And it's scary. It's super scary. Yeah. Yeah. And if you try to swim against it, you think you're a good swimmer and you swim, 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 swim. 
And like, I once got caught in a current that was like headed north up the beach in Florida. And I was trying to swim it toward the beach east. And I thought I was swimming really well. And it re because I was making such progress, I was moving so far. And then I looked up and realized I had never seen the landscape <laughs> mm. that was there. It was a totally different beach. And it was like, it was seriously scary. Um, trying to get out of it because you you could drown out there pretty easily even in america so even in america so why do you think that culture establishes these really strong drift patterns marty well i think it's there's so much of us that want to control other people and control ourselves too but we really i think drift patterns happen when a, a certain critical mass of people want to control one another and it's usually because we think, sometimes we think it's because it will keep them safe, but often we like reinforce drift patterns because we think it'll force people to do what we want or get what we want from them. Well, so I guess like, if you're kind of, if you're defining safety as your goal and that safety is doing more or less what you did, you might be tempted to push someone else into that. Yeah. Yeah, like um, if you, we all try to protect our children by teaching them to do certain things, to obey us implicitly, to respond to what we say. And it does start off as protection and it's important that way. But if you look deeper into really controlling parents, often they want the child to represent themselves, like um, reflect well on me, child. It's not just about protecting you. It's about um, making the kids buff up our cultural place. And um, marriage is the same way. I've seen so many clients who forced spouses to make um, decisions that were in keeping with cultural norms, but it wasn't because of the, for the good of either one of the people. It was so in one spouse's mind, they would look good to the neighbors, to their parents, to whoever. Yeah. It's so interesting how the way that we're controlled by culture is so much about what's it going to look like to other people so intense yeah it's it's about appearances and and there's a part of us that also likes it when other people give us these cultural patterns that we can just follow because it, do, it means we don't have to make scary choices we just mm. lie on our backs and drift and we go to the places we're supposed to go to yeah yeah it's perfect and you get the rewards of the culture and you get the feeling of safety and doing what's familiar what you've seen other people do is very is, feels very safe and very affirming yeah. but it's yeah. like you know, you have to think of but at what cost to, I don't know, your right. soul, right? Right. At, at what cost do we never set precedents of breaking free? At, at what cost do we ad agree never to do the things our culture says we don't do? There's that that weird thing of, of drift patterns where it's just, what, why don't we do it? Well, we just don't. People like it's us, not, we just... It's not the done thing. Yes, we don't wear white shoes after Labor Day. I don't even know when Labor Day is, nor do I own white shoes. But that's beside the point. Yeah, it's it's weird. All these little cues and somebody says, but we don't do that. And you're like, oh, all right. Because. Yeah, because that's powerful for whatever mm -hmm, reason. That's mm -hmm. very powerful. I was just thinking about how much um, like the culture our lives are set up with all these little rewards like when you pass each mm. level you get like points you know and like oh, your wedding yeah. you know wedding gifts get married the culture loves you know it when you get right. married and and everyone will give you a toaster and a fridge i don't know what you get um but no one gave me a wedding present weirdly <laughs> nobody gave me one either the second time i got them when, when i first got married as a 20 year old mormon i got bags of sugar that's what Mormons get as wedding gifts more often than not. I love that. But nobody gave me anything when we got married. No, weird. Almost like we never told anyone and went in yoga pants. But anyway, that's a story for another time. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so like wedding gifts are a classic because if you don't get married, you got to buy your own freaking toaster. That's right. That's and, right. You know, and then and, and the whole of doing the standard middle of the road mainstream life is mm -hmm. set up with those kinds of rewards that's a really obvious one but to just to accord with the standard milestones is just pure reward after reward it's like little dopamine yeah. hits They're like a little computer game 
Oh, and we just long for it because it's like we're going to be set for life if we can just get into the right current. And and if, if it will just grab us hard enough, it makes me think of the Janice Ian song, 17. Yeah. Because I was I really identified with that song. And part of it goes, the rich relationed hometown queen marries into what she needs with a guarantee of company and haven for the elderly. Your whole damn life is set if you look right at 17 and you get the football star to marry you mm. you'll be you'll you're set to the grave yeah it's interesting this topic brings so many songs up it's so interesting because i started thinking then as you were talking about jack and diane the john Cougar mm-hmm. Mellon oh, right camp, right right you know and and that's that kind of hometown thing life goes on long after the long yeah, after the i think joy the thrill of living is the gone. thrill the thrill yeah. of living is gone yeah yeah um but it is. It's so. I mean, I really think marriage and conventional look in marriage is really fascinating. Like mm-hmm. the traditions are so well scripted, and so you yes. grow up and you see. And this is in our culture. It's very, it can right. be very different. Right. But like, I could imagine for a Hindu wedding as well, it would work exactly the same way. You grow mm-hmm. up seeing all those amazing traditions, right? And or or whatever you, the traditions are, but. You know, you see that white dress, you see those suits, you see whatever the meaningful images yeah. are, you hear the stories, so much of the the culture's power is in storytelling. And yeah. then when you embody that picture and it's you in there and uh-huh. you're, you're like falling into line with the ancestors and you know oh. you're doing it right because you're doing the same thing they did. Yeah. Oh, every and it seems, Disney movie. Yeah. Yeah, and it seems like if we can just keep in that current, actually, it's the solution to everything. It is. And yet I actually, at 17, I was so highly acculturated because I was was raised in Mormonism back when, I mean, they didn't even have, there was a a sitcom that had a gay character and in Utah, it couldn't be shown until after 11 p.m. so that children would never see it. (laughs) When the gays Um, come out. When the gays come out. It's well known uh, that gays come out at 11. (laughs) (laughs) Nightly. I I was 30 when I came out. Um, But they should come out when they're 11 kids it gets better anyway i mormonism is a very narrow very strong current or at least it was when i was a lass um and i got really stuck in it i really was it's not that i wanted to be the bride or anything but i wanted that um certainty i wanted that i wanted to fit in i wanted to be safe forever i really i did not ever want to be lonely and i thought that current is the way and i jumped in Mm. and i got married at 20 and had three kids right away and really thought that i was set for the rest of my Mm. life Mm. and then what happened (laughs) and i decided i wanted to kill myself um yeah things my body fell apart my i got really really depressed and I remembered that at the end of that same song, Janice Ian says, remember those who win the game, lose the love they sought to gain. Listen to these lines. I love it. In debentures of quality and dubious integrity. And I just wrote a book about integrity just a few years ago. I just because... wrote a book about debentures. <laughs> it's thrilling. It's a thriller. But but a love story as well. <laughs> what is now a debenture, that, please, when it's at home? I think it means it's worth less you you accept something that's worth less it's like that um dating show on mad tv called lowered expectations <laughs> you'll do anything to get in the current you'll sell out mm. and um and you'll abandon your integrity i didn't know who i really was at that age so what i did was leave my integrity by getting into the current and saying this is the way i want to live my life my my ex-husband i think would say the same thing he had done exactly the same thing grew up in the same culture um, also very young. He was 23 when we got married. So we did it the way we were caught in the current of our culture and we were floating along together. And at a certain point we looked at each other and went, neither one of us likes this current at mm-hmm. all. Mm-hmm. I think largely based on the fact that I fit all three of the categories that the Mormon church 
one of the, the leaders came out and said in the 90s, um, there are three enemies of the church in the latter days, feminists, intellectuals, and homosexuals. Uh -oh. And I was like, oh, oh, that rings a bell. I got three for three. And uh, I imagine that, like I wake up in the current, it kind of reminds me, I saw a sea otter colony in, in California at the beach. I was just going to say this story reminds yeah. me so much of otters. It I just, does, doesn't it? so sea obvious. It's almost, it's almost too obvious, though, to go to the otter <laughs> angle at this point. More young Mormon couple. It just screams otter story. Go on. Sea please, otter go on. in particular. Yeah, those things are big. They're like as big as a four-year-old. So there's these big fuzzy <laughs> darling things. And they're sleeping They're sleeping on their backs in the water on a rocky cove in California. And one of the babies is sleeping with um, his paw interlaced with his mommy's paw, which is adorable. Aww. Aww. And then he got too sleepy and he let go. And he got caught in a rip and oh. he was, both of them were asleep and it was carrying him out. Oh, oh, oh. And he oh, was going oh. out quickly, still asleep. And all, there were like a small group of people on the beach and we were screaming at the otters to wake up. Marty, and then the if this freaking story doesn't have a happy ending, I swear to God, <laughs> I will not be the only one coming for you. <laughs> I'm going to write a novel about it. It's a no. tragedy that, that yeah, rivals Anna Karenina. No, it had a great ending. Okay. What happened was the baby woke up and I saw his little head come up and then I saw his little mouth open. And you know how sight travels faster than sound? Like you'll see lightning and then you'll hear it. Mm -hmm. He let out a shriek that I saw before I heard it. Like his little <laughs> mouth open. And then I heard... <laughs> And the mother woke up and turned her head and she was like, ah! It's like me at the supermarket when I turn my head for a minute to look at an ingredients list or something. I turn back and I'm like, where the fuck is the baby? Where's Marty? What? Is she, is she well dressed? Are her clothes on correctly? Um, no, they are not. And I am hiding under the, the um, ginger root. Okay, so anyway, these two otters, they swam toward each other, they clenched paws, and there was a happy memory. Uh, sorry, a happy, it is a happy memory for me. There was a happy ending to it. And um, that is basically what I did when I was 29. And decided that I was gonna... <laughs> you just watched otters? Yes, I just watched otters. No, I was the baby otter who had drifted far from shore. And I woke up and looked and like my, my, the people that I was meant to be with, like lesbians, were far away from me. And I did open my tiny mouth and shriek. Ah, I'm a gay feminist intellectual mom. Help me. The lesbians saw you screaming before they heard you though. Well, Carrie Koo did. She came swimming in going, I'm in the same current and I'm all the three of those things too. And together we swam cross current and got away. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. And the rest is history. But <laughs> it was kind of a gift to be in such a strong culture because I was so uh, conformist. And because it was so, abs the current was so absolutely inimical to my nature that it was one of those things that when I woke up, I could kick off it really hard and say, I want to be the opposite of that. Mm. So in a weird way, it, it's good to wake up in a current when to see that it is really drifting fast and you really need to do something about it instead of waiting until you're 80 and then going, oh, that was a mistake. When I came to my senses, I was in such a strong current carrying me so fast that I realized quickly, you know, relatively quickly before 30 that I was, I needed to push away, um, which is kind of nice. I think the earlier you can push away from culture, the earlier you find your true nature. It is sort of really uh, bound up in youth, a lot of this stuff, isn't it? Because mm. it's like that's when it gets its claws in you a little bit. It, there's all, uh, so many of those cultural milestones happen when you're really young and then, you know, you were very lucky. If you'd given another five years, you might not have got off that, you know. Right. Let you're alone right. another <laughs> 20. I mean, I think we can always get off it, but, you know, it's, you've always you've got more and more and more to lose, quote, yeah. unquote. <laughs> And on. I think we need to say it's never too late. Like no, no, I've that's, seen a yeah. lot of people finally push back in their 60s, 70s, even 80s and really be glad they did. Yeah. Oh, God, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny because I, thinking about myself, I thought I wasn't in a current. I thought I was 
just such a little renegade individual and I was I knew I was pushing back against the mainstream because I wasn't mm-hmm. doing all the things that you were doing in my 20s but it's really funny that it, it's what I ended up doing of course because it's me is just kind of pledging allegiance to a different current a different culture you know I think everybody does that especially when we're young yeah 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 I mean I just you just sort of casting about a little bit you know for Mm -hmm. for something and for me as long as it wasn't um marriage and children and the steady job and everything and so I just I did sort of like you you're like you know the gay intellectual what was it feminist lesbian oh yeah the gay lesbian don't tell me she's a lesbian lesbian as well as being gay yeah Um, gay lesbian feminist yeah so for me it was just like uh it was so important to me god I was such a little punk Marty it was so important (laughs) to me to be seen not to not to be doing those things so Uh I spent my 20s I had no financial security I built no career I didn't have a family (laughs) I just wandered about and I was like oh my gosh I was such a dickhead um you know like kind of really self-aware of my own youth and like yeah this is the moment that you can do this so do it to the max oh yeah and um it's it's just silly it's just silly and I followed all the kind of tropes of the hippies really like I was sort of it's funny because I was drifting into what my parents generation did when they were young and my Uh parents particularly you know I just I did the same bloody things you know, I played <laughs> acoustic guitar and smoked cigarettes and pot and went to India. You know, it's, it's but that took a of, lot of energy, a lot of guts. I mean, it it it, it was a pretty fun current. That's the thing. I think actually, it was fun. it's you've never wasted your time being in a current. Like you, you learn mm. who you are, um, no matter what current you're in. So I really don't want listeners to think, oh, I've really blown it. I haven't. I've been letting drift patterns have me. But the thing is. I think no long, no matter how long you drift, now you're waking up and going, oh yeah, I was such a little punk. I was caught in these hippie modes. At the moment you can say that, you've learned something. You've taken this position that's outside that cultural drift. Mm-hmm. It's like you've thrown your, your past self a rope. Like the moment you wake up, you've already learned from everything you did before. So n- I, I really feel like no drift is wasted, but the drifts that are not right for your true nature can make you suffer a lot and they can make you exhausted and miserable. And more than that, like it's never as simple as we're making it sound in the sense that you're all, even if you're in some sort of drift pattern, you're doing it in your own way and you're, you know, you're still, Mm. you're still on, on your path or whatever. Like it's not, it's not as simple as, oh, you were wrong and now you're right or anything like that. It's always going to be a very complex thing but you know I think that that it is true though that it's very tiring to swim against mm-hmm. any current at any time and oh, that's the truth you know you've it's like what you've got to do it when it matters hmm. and and maybe not so much when it doesn't matter it's like what parts of my life do I stake this on so right. So the drift pattern can have me as long as it's not taking me too far away from my truth because it's so tiring to swim against it. Yeah, like, okay, my kid is going to, wants to have whatever in her lunchbox. I'm not going to put a lot of energy into swimming against the current on that because this other thing really matters to me. You know, I'm I'm getting I'm getting the much the to my delight. Is, 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 um, <laughs> Remember before Lila was born, you were like, my children, my child will never see a screen in her life, and I was like, oh crap, my other children saw a lot of screens, and now no screens, <laughs> no processed food, no white food, nothing, not not to my child, never, not my felt- child. I felt so deeply affirmed the other day when you she was sick and you turned on Peppa Pig and you just went, oh, thank God for television. It's like toddler <laughs> storage. And I was like, oh, I wasn't evil. I did not do something lazy. I let that current take me because raising kids is hard and you need whatever current you can get most days. I think for those of us who have children, nothing in the world is cuter than what we thought before we had the children. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
Oh, oh my God. you were so, so cute. I like to ask pregnant clients or, or dads of pregnant people, um, what do you think life will be like with a baby? Oh, we'll get up in the morning. We'll read stories and do dances and we'll make macaroni art. Then the baby will nap while I have a career. But, you know, like, okay, hon, you just drift into that. You just go well, ahead. We'll there sit side by there. side. <laughs> we'll sit side by side. She'll draw with her crayons and I'll just type away on my laptop. Do, 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 do. Nice. I'll take her to the office. I'll take both the twins to the office. <laughs> Everyone will be delighted and they'll sit in their bassinets like tiny little dolls. <laughs> Good Whoa. times. Good times. Yeah. So all of that was to say that um, you pick your battles and, you know, because you don't want to be exhausted, completely exhausted from being yeah. a maverick at the point where something really matters. Yeah, you, I mean, if you're sailing a ship and you get in a current that's going where, basically where you want, you can ride it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So so we're all in some currents, and that's not always bad, but sometimes we need to wake up and start screaming like otters. And um, I would compare that to coming to our true nature. Um, instead of coming to consensus, come to our senses. How do we come to our senses about drift patterns, Rowie? It's an excellent question, and we're going to talk about it in just a minute. So what are some ways that we can recognize that we're in a drift pattern, like when we're drifting with culture and probably away from our true nature? Well, for me, I think it's a push-pull thing. I felt sort of pushed. Like if I go back to my whole Mormon thing, I felt awful. I felt like a, a sense of growing resentment that I, an exhaustion mm. that I couldn't place because it was all around me and right. uh, my body started to break down i got really grumpy and depressed it it was like everything in my true nature was going into revolt and kind of pushing me away from the cultural model oh that's so, there's so a lot interesting of push. Yeah. yeah whereas i can remember a really distinct sense of being pulled towards I, I guess my true oh, yeah. nature. I can't. I keep having trouble like extending this metaphor in the right directions. But anyway, I can. I had this really vivid memory yesterday of sitting. I was dating this guy, and I was at his house, and he had all these housemates, and they were all like super intelligent, educated people. And so I'm sitting there, about to go off and be a waitress, eating my toast, and there's this conversation going on at the table, and um, they started talking about whatever the political matter of the day was. And I just remember Jasper saying, well, you know, Mossad will be all over that. And I was like, what's Mossad? What's Mossad? I have to, I've, I need to know this. And I just remember thinking I am supposed to be someone who can talk about concepts and political concepts and what's mm. happening in the world. And I was just like out of the clear blue sky, I just had to. And and after <laughs> that year in Ireland, I went home and enrolled in a master's in international politics because it was just like this bing, bing, and, and now it pulled you know, me. Now you, there is an area where you, another area where you have to keep me as a pet because you know so much about international politics. And I'm like, what did my shot? So there, there's the push of resentment and t fatigue. And then there's the pull of excitement. And often it's both at once, I think, because I think our true nature is fighting back. The further we get in a drift pattern away from our true nature, the stronger the pressures that are coming from mm. inside, both push and pull saying, not that, go over there. So what do you do when you're in a moment and you realize, oh my God, I've been in a drift pattern. Mm. I hate it. And I feel pushed away from it and I feel pulled towards something else, but it's the, the current is strong. What do I do? I don't know if it's because we're talking about this elemental thing of the roiling ocean or whatever, but when it's like, what do we do? What pops into my head really bizarrely is from early childhood, from primary school, and I was amazed to hear that you, you had this over here as well because it feels like something that would have just been in my, like, little corner of the world. But oh, do stop, tell. stop, drop, and roll. When we're in a – and now, again, the metaphor strains ridiculously. <laughs> That's her fire. That's yeah. her fire. If you're on fire, stop, drop, and roll. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, if you're on fire. <laughs> <laughs> when yes. did you guys do it? When do you do it in Australia when there are snakes? Yeah, just basically anything. 
It's just it's just not safe. Except snakes. Snakes are usually on the ground, so don't drop. So if I'm Jump. in downtown Melbourne and yeah. I just get worried and people and something is worrying people and I see people stopping, dropping and rolling around, I just assume that they're alarmed about something. Oh shit, mate. It's time to stop, drop and roll, I guess. <laughs> oh well. Everyone else is doing it. I think it's a great phrase because it, if you take the fire part out, because I don't even think it's a metaphor. I literally <laughs> think you have to stop. I think, I think stop, drop, and roll. It's exactly what you need to do. Literally stop what you're doing. Like go into a room by yourself. Stop it. Yeah. Stop everything. Yeah. I, I need to defend this because it is... I think it pops up and maybe it even embeds so deeply in our psyche, the stop, drop and roll, because mm. it is like a message from the universe, mm. you know. Um, this will get you out of your parents' house. Exactly. exactly. Unless they kick you back in. No, I. it's really, really primal. You're right. I mean, it, whenever I get caught in any kind of cultural drift, even if, you know, you talk about culture at different levels, every every friendship has a culture, every um, school has a culture. So whenever I feel that push-pull inside me, I have to get by myself. Um, so I literally stop going mm. with the flow of the culture by being by myself away from any of those pressures. So it's a literal stop. And then I drop in. I drop in to my deepest self. It's funny, huh? drop. It's drop. Drop in is the expression you use, but I immediately, being a good little hippie, think of drop out, <laughs> the alternative Wait, expression. Wasn't that like, a hippie thing? Drop, drop in, in. Drop out, drop in, smoke pot or something. <laughs> <laughs> I was in Utah. I didn't know. I, I know, but I can't think of it in this moment. Oh, Everyone, I'll... just put it in the comments, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, there, I use the phrase drop in when I go into like a meditative state and a lot of yeah. people use it. It does feel, I mean, I even picture it as, you know, I, I sort of drop my eyes to half mast and, and I my attention turns inward to the center of my head. And then it's almost like I feel something like a coin dropping into a well and it ends up landing right in the center of my body. And hmm. that, you know, it goes through my heart and down into my solar plexus and there or all the way to the pit of my gut called the hara in japanese and there i feel what's right for me and where the cultural drift is taking me that i don't want to go so, a so dro i think drop in is great it's so interesting that you have to get alone because alone is the only place where there's no culture yeah isn't that yeah. fascinating so you stop you get alone you drop in so you get down below the conscious mind where or your um, interjected culture is, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you, you, all the that left brain stuff, all the language and voices and blah blah blah, and just sink down below that because that's where we can listen to ourselves, right? Listen to I, our true self. Stop, drop, people, listen, and roll. Listen, yeah, that's that's implied in the dropping in, and I think some people get so good at it they can do it in the middle of a conversation. Like, mm. I think if you practice it, you get better and better, and then you're not, then you're wild, right? Right. I'm not sure where the metaphor goes with roll, although I like, do. Oh, well, say, tell me. All right. So maybe so you you stop, drop, and listen, and you listen to your true self, and maybe your true self says. No, you're just hungry or whatever. Uh, it's fine. You're not. You, you, this is a fine current for now. But yeah. if your true self is like, yeah, this is not right for us, you're a little body and you're in a little current and then you just uh -huh. roll, 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 roll. <laughs> <laughs> I have to just say roll that's out of it. Sea otters roll a lot. Oh, my God. Everything I'm, with the otters every I'm time. I'm just saying. I mean, they... Muddy, they if you love otters so much, why don't you just marry them? Wait, what? You're not an otter? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, well, they do roll and they make some progress that way. I, I think it's, when I think about this, I think about how Lila, our beautiful Lila was not an early walker. <laughs> no, she not. she just basically was fine being a sponge for several months after other babies were toddling about. <laughs> And before she could walk, before she could stand, before she could crawl, she began to roll about. Mm. And that's when it's it's when they started to roll. I mean, it's like the 
basic first thing a baby learns like you leave them on the change table and the next thing you hear is a thump and you've never seen them move at all before <laughs> they have rolled and i think at the times when i have been pushed and pulled and drifted it out to way beyond my comfort zone i have my lying flat thing moves in and i lie down flat and then in my mind i roll in the opposite direction or crosswise for the current <gasps> crosswise i just yeah. realized why it's roll it's roll why? because swimming it against the current is exhausting and roll is a very low energy way to get out of something like instead of oh, no. flounder and butterfly and try to do freestyle which you never really learn properly anyway out of the current <laughs> just roll everybody can roll roll yeah roll. you're just floating there i i love that because i, I sometimes when people uh, tell me they want to come back to integrity and they're like i have to do all these dramatic gestures and i'm like that is going to break you like the current is so strong that if your little fragile self gets up there and tries to fight it, it may just break you. But if you can just gently roll away, you know, you're talking to your parents and you think, I don't agree with that perspective. And instead of having to change the whole family system, you go back to your, you know, you go get in your car or your room or whatever. You drop in, you go, that's not the way I want to go. And then you just gently go to some place on the internet or whatever, where people with other ideas, you find another current that's going a different way. Because I think the drift patterns, like the navigation patterns for ships are incredibly valuable, but you have to be able to like steer into the currents and know that there are always currents. And if you can roll into the right one, bingo. Marty, against all my best intentions you have managed to make this an incredibly useful and practical podcast i think i think i'm gonna use it i think people are gonna use it um i, I think it's awesome and what i've learned is um that the zipper usually goes in the back <laughs> <laughs> i've learned that you I'm thought really... i was an otter this whole time <laughs> and I'm willing to roll with that zipper in the back thing. I will roll. And as long as as long as we all roll together, we can just wave at each other in the ocean. So keep rolling and, and stay, stay wild. wild. We hope you're enjoying Bewildered. If you're in the USA and want to be notified when a new episode comes out, text the word WILD to 570-873-0144. We're also on Instagram. Our handle is Bewildered Podcast. You can follow us to get updates, hear funny snippets and outtakes, and chat with other fans of the show. Bewildered is produced by Scott Forster with support from the brilliant team at MBI. And remember, if you're having fun, please rate and review and stay wild. <laughs>